Hello, I'm George Cole. Welcome to part one of a three-part series titled Tumble Creek. Anyway, this is an area up in Rocky Mountain National Park. I made up the name, but it's they've got so many streams up there and they tumble down. Today was block-in, and block-in is trying to figure out where these shapes are going to be on the canvas. My canvas is at 11 by 14, very manageable. And um, then filling in these shapes with a value color. I go through that step by step, and what I'm creating is a foundation for the rest of the painting. The thing I have to remember as I'm mixing my paints is that I want to put it on thin. I don't want it too wet, like with too much Gamsol or medium. I want to try to keep it dry, but a little bit wet. And I kind of can tell that by looking at the sheen. If you look at it sideways, if I'm getting a lot of sheen reflection from the light, uh, that means I've got too much Gamsol or medium in it. I use Gamsol. All right, so um, get outside and paint. This is springtime. It's time to get outside. It's really a good teacher. Paint with your friends and get critiques on your work. All right, so let's jump into part one. All right, bye-bye. Hello and welcome to part one of a three-part series titled Tumble Creek. I'm George Cole. Excited to bring this three-part series to you on 11 by 14. Let me start my timer over here, and to remind me, I don't want to run over my 30 minutes. And um, we'll get started with blocking. Blocking, I have this white canvas, and what we want to do with uh, this is cover it with thin value colors, and figure out where the shapes are going to be in this painting. Simple, okay. <clears throat> don't make it more complicated, and don't get into detail. We'll do that. If you want detail, do that at the end of the painting. Alrighty, so I've got my basics here, my two blues, ultra, cobalt, alizarin, yellow ochre, cat orange, maples, uh, Hansa yellow deep, Hansa yellow medium, transparent oxide red, transparent oxide brown. I have a dark gray by Richardson. And I have a ice blue by, I'm sorry, by, uh, by Richardson also, called ice blue. It's very nice. I have some various greens. Um, it looks like I've got uh, Viridian, I've got Permanent, and it looks like some sort of a mixture of uh, all of them. Titanium white down here in the lower right, and I should be ready to go. All right. Get a little bit more titanium out. So let's figure out where these shapes are going to be. The way I do that is to try to figure out my brain, these quadrants, there's like four quarters here. And I look at my reference and I figure out where those um, quadrants are going to be also. And then I get in there and start figuring out where the shapes are. I can probably show you better than I can tell you. I've got a, just a little bit of Gamsol in my brush. I've got an old worn out uh, Da Vinci stubby flat it looks like. Something worn out and stubby. It's got a little stiffness to it. So I've got uh, uh, Ultra Blue. I'm going to put some Transparent Oxide Red in there. And I'm going to put just a little bit of gray, light gray. And a little bit of yellow ochre this time. It's kind of an in-between color. It's kind of in-between gray and green. And you see I thoroughly have mixed it. So I'm going to figure out where my shapes are. And I know over here there's a big dark area in here. And I know up here there's some sky. And up here I see 
the river tumbling down. This is called Tumble Creek. <clears throat> That's the name of our... Boy, there's some big rocks. This, looking at this area, it's up in Rocky Mountain National Park. You realize the power of nature to bring these huge rocks down the river. And there's more of a lighter area here. More of a darker area up in here. And down here are big honking rocks, as they say. I watched this series on the, one of the home and garden shows. It's called uh, Barnwood Builders, and he always says big honking timbers. So we're dealing with big honking rocks this morning. So this is where the rocks are. And there's rocks over in here also. And then there's this pool that's kind of neat. It's kind of a, <clears throat> a warm color. So you may have a different way of putting your shapes down, of being more detailed or whatever, but what I want to do is just really lightly introduce where these shapes are going to be. I think, looking at this, I have to reduce the size of my deal here and here. I think this is good. Okay. So let me figure out now, I want to get into a little bit more detail of where these rocks might want to be. So I'm going to add more gray to the one side of the mixture. And I'm going to start figuring out where some rocks are going to be. If I think a rock is too big or too small, I'll increase the size of it. Final rock will be here. He starts at a different level. And smaller rocks are going to be up in here and there. All right, there's one rock field. And then let's go over here to some other rock fields. Under here. Just a big dark in here. And then smaller rocks over in this area. With the dark on one side. Just go through one by one. Try not to make it too tedious for yourself. here, more rocks here, and then I think we have shrubberies coming up here. <clears throat> and then we have this big boy rock up in here, and I'll reduce the size of them. And then there's some guys in the river. Call him Center Rock. All right, <clears throat> let's start making some darker mixtures. I'm going to pick this drawing color up, and I'm going to go darker. Ultra blue, transparent oxide brown, yellow ochre. The yellow ochre <coughs> brings out a dull green. Time to change brushes. So let me clean up this old beat up Da Vinci. 
and move on to something bigger. And this looks like a number 8 uh, flat, 279. I don't want to put this paint on thick, so I've added a little bit of game salt to it. Might be a little too dark. Okay. Let me get a little bit more yellow ochre in there. Okay. There's a really nice dark mixture. Now over here it's a little lighter, so I added a little bit more <clears throat> yellow ochre to the mixture. And I'll add that now. And if you want to get a little bit more dark, just put a little bit more blue and brown in that mixture. And there we go. I have a little bit of this dark mixture left, and I think I'll put it over in here. And I'll put some over into here. And then I'll go to the lighter mixture. I added more yellow ochre, a little bit of Gansol. A little bit more yellow ochre, please. And a little bit more blue. Ultra blue. Come on, lighten it up. I need some lighter gray to it. <clears throat> there we go. That shows that there's a transition there. Coop the side of this brush up a little bit more. And use some of it over here on the right. You see, I changed the side of the brush to sh show there's kind of like trees going up on one side. I want to get some dark over on one side, so I'm going over to the left now, and I need some darks coming through here. Just kind of soft, slopped it on there. Slop with purpose. And now I want to add some more green to this. So let me just get some permanent green in here. Let me see if I can lighten this whole thing up. And get some Naples. And... So the permanent green in Naples really lightened it up, and that should be helpful. A little bit more Naples. And Hansa yellow medium. Oh, that's a pretty color. All right, let's paint. Back to it. So I'm trying to clean some of the darker color out of my brush. And here we go. I think I need some of the darker green here on top. And the lighter stuff kind of comes in here. I have all this smart equipment, my phone and my watch telling me that I better be in class right now. Which I am, I'm here, I'm on time. 
Now, if it's a little too dark, what you can do is just to wad up the uh, paper towel and come in here and see how that just lightens some of the area that needs to be lightened, as well as maybe over here too. And Okay, let's move on, and in this case, let's work on the lower section of the painting. I'm going to keep this handy, this mixture, because we may need it when I realize I'm working in the lower section. Oh, I missed a part where I could use some of this darker <clears throat> green. So I'm using my razor blade scraper, which you can find at auto parts stores, because that's what they scrape your inside of your glass when you're changing your oil. Um, they always have that stuff on your windshield that says, you need to get a oil change at such and such a mileage. <clears throat> and then they scrape it off and put a new one on there. Okay, so what I'd like to do is make a warm color, kind of an olive brown. So I'm going to go yellow ochre, add a little red to it, yellow ochre and a little bit of touch of olive and now transparent oxide red. And I'm going to put that over in this area, <clears throat> so that'll be useful. <clears throat> Excuse me, I got a frog in my throat. It's a funny term, frog in your throat. Okay, so now I want to make a gray, a dark gray. So I'm just going to go over here to my cool gray and make it dark on one side. <clears throat> I'm going to add some blue to it. and some transparent oxide red, uh, brown to darken it. That's the dark side of my rocks. And now I'm going to use this lighter stuff, the ice blue, and I'm going to add a little bit of cobalt to it, and also a little bit of transparent oxide red. instead of gray. <clears throat> Going to add a little bit more transparent oxide red to it. And that has a nice warm light gray touch to it. Alright, <clears throat> so this time I'm going to choose a number six long flat 2025 rosemary. It's a little stiff from not being used for a few days, so I'm dipping it and drying it in my turf. All right, and here I go. I want to try to get some of these lights in here, particularly, see that is the upper rock. get some mileage out of this thing. And I'm just getting some light parts on top of the rocks. Now each one of these rocks is different, but for now I just want to get a dark and a light in them and figure out the rest later. And there's a light in here. I'm just going to go over here with the gray too. I'm going to get some of these grayer rocks to, taken care of. I think I really need a dark dark in there. 
Okay, let's get some rocks up here. Just looking for lights. And now I'm going to go to the darker gray, add a little cobalt to it, and a little bit of brown to it, transparent oxide brown. And let's work on some of the darks. There's just a bunch of dark in here, so I'll just add some darks in appropriate places. And now some darks over on this side. And we have a rock in the center of the river and some other rocks over on the side. Have some little rocks down in here, just portions of flat rocks. And then <clears throat> some lighter color on top of them. You say, well, how do you know where to put these things? I'm not trying to be over specific. I'm trying to get in the closest I can in my mind to it, but I try not to, you know, go crazy on getting the thing exactly and worrying about it. I know because these paints are so thin, I can rearrange it and paint on top of it. As I go down and find, oh, that is, really needs to be in a different place. What I found about this medium, because I started years ago <coughs> painting watercolor, that uh, oils, once I got into oils, it was much more forgiving. <coughs> and that's why I think I've stuck with it for such a long time. All right. Now, I think we made that warm color over here. So let's add some of that with some of the light gray and put that in over in this area. And then it kind of goes into a green olive. Olive. I've got all of the warm color over here. I think I overdid that. I went a little too dark with it. But let's go back to the warm. Add some Naples to it and lighten it up. And I'm going to bring some of that down to a lower level, down into here. <clears throat> As you can see, I'm adding some Naples because my pile of paint is not that big. And it gives me some, some juice to get some spread out of it. What I want to do with some white and a touch of Viridian and some light gray is to put in some, looks like it's, you know, it's, it's hard running water down in here. I don't know if you can really pick this up so much, but it does come in well down here. And I'm going to run some of that into my warm color, just by running the side of the brush into it right here like that. Checking my time, how am I doing? Okay, we need to get serious here. 
and finish this up. So with this light color I have, I'm going to add more white to it. And a little bit of viridian. And a little bit of gray. And now, I'm loading up both sides of this brush and filling in this tumble creek area. And what this has done for me is given me a little bit of clarity of where these shapes and color values are going to be. I need some darks over in here. It's a big dark area. And in the sky, I think I'll just get some some white and a little bit of cobalt. Some gamsol and put a dull sky in for now. And you are at the point of we have covered this entire canvas with value colors. So I've got a minute or two left. Let me get back and see how this looks. All right, so I think I've got everything basically in the same place. I'll probably step back in here tomorrow morning and say, you know, maybe I should have made this higher or lower, and I can make those changes because this is really thin, thin paint. All right, um, what you might do, as I will do, is get my knife and just kind of soften these edges because I have a lot of areas where the canvas is coming through and this can get rid of some of that stuff. And if you have something really heavy you can pick it up with the edge of a knife just like you can hear me scrape it. And the other thing is get a soft brush and soften it that way. And cover up those white canvas areas. All right, time to clean the brushes and bring part one to a close. Part one, blocking of Tumble Creek. Thank you so much for getting started with me, and we have still part two and three to go. Part two is balance. Part three is detail. All right, that's really simplifying all the processes we go through, but I can explain as I go. All right, looking forward to seeing you in part two and three.